Hi there and welcome to Tech for Everyone. Today we're going to go back to basics a little bit. Um, I was with my mum the other day and she asked me how to wire a plug and it suddenly occurred to me that not everyone knows how to wire a plug and a few people might benefit from this video. So we're, as this is Tech for Everyone, we're going to look today at how to wire a 13 amp plug. Now this is a standard 13 amp uh, UK plug so for those of you watching in the US and elsewhere, sorry this may not be for you some of the principles will be the same and, uh, and if you can pick up and follow along then great. We're going to look at how to change a plug, we're going to look also at um, the plugs that come with just a live and neutral and no earth, uh, these are uh, sometimes confusing for people and someone was asking me that question the other day well this one's only got two cables, why has it only got two cables, so we're going to look at that and also just how to change a fuse and, and where you'll find a fuse. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Here we have our plug that we're going to attach to the cable. It's a standard 13 amp plug. It's got three pins. You'll notice the two pins at the bottom there have a protection around each pin. This is to stop you touching the pin as you insert it into the socket and getting a shock. We've also got a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and I'm using a Stanley knife to strip the cable. So we'll take the top off the plug, and that's done by undoing this Phillips screw on the bottom. Okay, so with the top off, you can see inside the plug we have three connection points here, here, and here. That's the neutral, the live, and the earth. There's a strain relief here. Turned over you can see the pins. You've got a live pin here marked with an L, the neutral marked with an N, and then the earth pin, which is the longest pin at the top. And that's marked with the earth and also an earth symbol. And the earth symbol, you can just see it there, is the dashed lines with one line coming out the top. So looking inside the plug, I can immediately tell you that that's the neutral and that's the live. The earth at the top there. And if we turn the plug over, you can see that it's the longer pin. And that means that if you're pulling the plug out, it's the last pin to become disconnected so that the appliance is earthed right up until the, uh, the last possible moment. The neutral pin here is on the left and the live on the right. If you're not sure about that, you can see inside a fused plug here, the fuse there is always in line with the live pin. So it passes through the fuse and then gets to the connection point for the live. So here we have the cable. It's got three cores. You can see blue, brown and green and that's live, neutral and earth. Brown is live, uh, blue is neutral and green and yellow is earth. So the first thing we're going to do is strip the cable. That means taking the insulation off the outside there, the black insulation, and then we'll take a little bit off the end of each of the three inner cores. So we're going to hold it up to the plug and measure from where the, the black insulation will be held in the strain relief. We need to measure the length that we need to get that earth cable first into the earth connector. You can see it might have to bend around that screw there. So we give it a little bit of a space on the top and that's enough room to strip the cable and get it into the connector and, and maybe bend it around that screw. So to strip the cable I'm using a Stanley knife here and that's just gently scoring around the outer layer of insulation. Not everyone has wire strippers in the house and then you can bend that cable around and the scoring should just pull apart there. You can see it's just coming apart. I need to give it another little nick here. Um, making sure that you don't go all the way through and hitting the cable on the bottom. If you nick the cables on the bottom, then you really need to redo this. There's no space for leaving a cable with nicks or any copper wire exposed. You need to be careful. You, of course, can use wire strippers to do this. This is just the method I learned and the method I prefer to use. Um, I've always got a standing knife with me uh, in, my, in my toolbox and I find this the easiest method. Okay, so now I've uh, got my live neutral and earth exposed. We now need to strip the ends of them to uh, reveal the, a bit of copper at the end to put into our connectors. So we need to measure the length, and I'll hold it up to the strain relief here, 
and I'll start with the earth and I know that that's pretty much the right length there. So the earth cable is um, the only one of the three really in which you want a little bit of slack on it. Uh, the other two cables you want to try and get in there um, as tight as possible but the earth cable if you've got a little bit of slack on it then if you do manage to pull the cable from the strain relief the earth cable is the last cable to become disconnected if the live wire then becomes disconnected and is floating around the plug is always earthed. The next thing to do is to measure out the lengths of your other cable so we're just going to fold the neutral round here that's just got a nip round into that connector you want it fairly, um, fairly tight uh, we're going to cut it about there and then uh, strip the cables. Now the cable has been stripped we just twist the ends of the wire so that we t twist the copper strands together and we're going to need to cut that down because it's uh, a bit too long to go into our connector. So that's it cut down. It's got about three or four mil of cable on the end. Um, we're going to do the same with the other cable so we've measured them to length and uh, strip the ends and you can see that what we end up with is a longer earth cable, a medium sized neutral and a short live. I'm going to put that up through the strain relief. I mean you can take the strain relief off to do this, I'm just rubbish at losing things so I've left the strain relief connected. So once that's under the strain relief, do the strain relief up, you just need to make sure that the Earth's in the middle, the live's off to the right and the neutral's off to the left so that once the strain relief's clamped down it's easy to manoeuvre your cables into the connectors. So we'll do the strain relief up by doing up these two screws here on the bottom and make sure they're nice and tight. You can see here that I've popped out the fuse and the live wire connector because it's easier to connect. So I'm putting the live wire into the connector and then I can pop it back in place and you'll once that's done up tight, so we're just going to do this screw up nice and tight. Once that's done up nice and tight, you can fuse, uh, pop your fuse back in there, and that's good to go. It's then time to repeat the process with your other wires. So you just need to screw those into each connector and make sure that the screws are done up nice and tight. The strain relief's done up nice and tight. And just check that there are no nicks in any of the cables and no exposed copper. Just checking the strain relief here. And the reason, and that just prevents the cable pulling out there. You can see that's uh, not going to pull out easily. And so that's it. There's the wired plug. It just remains to put the top back on, and you're all done. I just want to talk about the fuse. It's important to talk about the fuse. If you were to change a fuse, the process is less involved. You just take the top off the plug, expose the fuse inside. You can pop that out uh, either by taking out the assembly and popping the fuse out, or you may want to just slip a little screwdriver underneath and pop it out. Just be careful because the fuse is made of glass. And it's important to put the right fuse in for the right appliance. So I know this is a 13 amp appliance because it's a four way block of 13 amp plugs. Uh, if you're not sure you need to check the appliance and see what it's fused at and the, what the fuse does is protect the appliance and protect the cable. The cable will be rated to take a certain amount of current and as will uh, the appliance. So if there's a fault in the appliance and it draws a large amount of current or an infinite amount of current then the fuse, fuse needs to stop it getting past uh, the level at which the equipment or the cable is rated at. If, it, if you've got a 13 amp fuse and a 3 amp cable then you're drawing far too much current for that cable and the cable might get hot, uh, stuff might start to melt you know, and then it becomes dangerous. So very very important to make sure that you match your fuse to the appliance that you're putting in um, and the appliance should state on there what fuse it takes or the uh, plug that it came with originally might have a sticker on it to say what fuse it should accept in the plug. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about here is this plug here. You can see I've got a plug here that's rated at 3 amps. You can see the sticker on the front there. So that's useful. I'm not going to put a 13 amp plug in there, a uh, 13 amp fuse, sorry. And I'm going to take the back off and inside you can see that it's got a neutral and a live but no earth cable. There's no earth and that often confuses people. What you also maybe find is a 13 amp plug that has a plastic pin on the front and that can be quite confusing because obviously it doesn't conduct electricity. 
Uh, it doesn't need to conduct electricity and it doesn't need an earth and that's because this bit of equipment is a double insulated piece of equipment. Now that means it's got an extra piece of insulation inside on the connections inside the equipment and it doesn't require an earth because there's no ch chance that the casing or parts that the user comes into contact with can become live. So just to explain that the earth's there for safety which means that if a piece of equipment became faulty or the live wire became detached and you know metal parts of the equipment was able to become live, the earth's there to provide the shortest route to earth for the electricity. Now electricity will always want to find its way to earth. So with an earth in there, it's gonna go down that easy method rather than going through the user, which is what you want to avoid. So although the user may get a bite or you know something might be wrong, it'll go straight down the earth cable. So just remember that if you're changing a fuse or you open a plug and it's not got an earth wire, that's okay. It means it's a double insulated piece of equipment and it's nothing to worry about. Okay, so that was how to wire a plug. I hope you found that useful. Um, you'll notice that I was using a Stanley knife to strip the cables. Uh, that's probably not everyone's cup of tea and if you were to do it, I'd probably advise using wire strippers if you're not that comfortable with a Stanley knife. That's just how I was taught and that's, uh, that's my preferred method. You can get some great wire strippers for next to no cost that, that easily strip the cable. Um, if you want to comment on this video or any of our other videos, uh, you can reach us on Twitter. I'll put the uh, Twitter thing up on the screen right now so you can follow us on Twitter. Um, and over the next uh, week or so, Mike and I are going to start looking at the Canon DSLR cameras and comparing comparing them. Uh, we're going to look at shooting in some low light and see what the differences are, so look forward to those coming up. But until then, happy wiring and we'll catch you in the next video.